Hi, today we'll be talking about China and its data rules and laws for 2020, the past year. Uh, we will be talking about these three specific buckets, cybersecurity and data, personal information, and import export controls. Mark, why don't you kick us off with cybersecurity and data? Yeah, thanks, Sean. So cybersecurity, uh, this will affect mostly uh, international companies who are selling to large state-owned companies or companies who are somehow connected to the information infrastructure. Uh, three years ago, the law first came into effect. Uh, and 2020, we've seen a lot more clients ask questions about it. And importantly, there was the cybersecurity review measures. And this is important because it requires uh, formal contracts that touch upon cybersecurity to undergo a cybersecurity review before they can become effective. So this will really impact uh, companies who are selling into the Chinese infrastructure. Now, in addition, there's a draft data security law which will also establish certain data protection obligations and protection schemes. And interestingly enough, also pushes China's uh, powers with some extraterritorial reach. And we're seeing this more often. There's also that new regulation where China says it can you know, take action against companies uh, where their government has taken unfair measures against Chinese companies. So I guess all in all, it's something to look at if you're selling to large uh, Chinese state-owned companies or the people who are connected to the infrastructure. So Mark, what should what action should international businesses take considering this? So I think um, so if you're in, operating in a sector related to national interest, so for, for sure it'd be something like um, if you're selling to Chinese financial institutions, but also potentially healthcare providers, uh, even state-owned companies like the oil companies, uh, this may well bring you within the ambit of these regulations. And so you're going to actually really make sure that you've done those security uh, reviews. Otherwise, you will not be able to sign contracts. You will not be able to take part in tenders. And even if you do sign a contract, that contract will only become effective once you've fulfilled the uh, review. So I think for a lot of companies, it's going to make a big difference. And what about personal information this past year? Yeah, so there's been a lot of move uh, on the, the personal information front. Um, I think privacy is becoming a increasingly big issue. And I think the people who are most affected, the people who are uh, approaching us with these questions are life science companies, because uh, there's a lot of um, regulations about dealing with you know, important information that includes uh, health information, um, yeah, we had some clients who asked questions about transferring uh, details about Chinese DNA, which again is something very, very, a real hot topic. Uh, but perhaps also uh, retail companies are asking questions because they often have to pass information over. And so I think this kind of personal information, uh, it will really affect um, how you deal with uh, cross-border transfers of information and how you process it. And so I think the other thing we've seen is there was a lot of concern in the past that the Chinese um, authorities would start taking actions against foreign companies. I think what's been interesting is Chinese authorities have been taking action, but it's been mostly directed against Chinese companies. And there's been a lot of criminal cases about and even people arrested because they've actually uh, trespassed on people's privacy rights. Another thing is uh, people have also investigated a lot of apps because a lot of apps is collecting personal information and they've taken a lot of action in this case. So I think for international businesses, just make sure you understand the personal information and privacy protection systems. If you're a European company, what you do on GDPR will probably be pretty good for what you do here. There's a few little tweaks. And then I think the other thing is, it's not just the law you have to look at, but also public sentiment. And a lot of Chinese citizens are much more concerned about privacy than they were even a year ago. So I think there is a dynamic that uh, foreign companies probably want to keep an eye on. And just to echo another one is um, the import export controls, just to echo your your sentiment about the cross border businesses and, and how the government is uh, regulating that space as well. So could you give us a little bit of background on the import export controls? Yeah, so again, I think this is a bit reactive. So I think, you know, you know 2020, uh, yeah, it's not just the year perhaps of COVID, but it was also the year where globalization was really rolled back, you know, partly due to COVID, I think, too. And I think, you know, China is reacting to uh, many countries. You know, I think India perhaps kicked it off uh, with investment controls. And uh, so I think this is very much a reaction by China 
that everybody else is perhaps putting up the, uh, the barriers. And so basically, this is talking about, you know, as China's become now a hub of innovation, as well as, uh, you know, not just a, a factory, it also uh, invents things now, about how the exports will, of this technology will happen. Important is cryptography and encryptions, you know, as specified there. And then I guess, you know, who it will affect in particular from international companies are probably these companies who really see a global market and you know, especially big engineering companies. You can imagine the big German engineering companies will be affected or the big American ones where they have a mature business in China. And that business doesn't just do China-related um, work, but it's part of a global R&D chain. And so I think this kind of export will be really affecting the R&D uh, cooperation probably won't stop all of it. Uh, I mean, it will not stop all of it, but you might have to be a bit careful about how you're doing it, what kind of technology you're exporting, and just make sure that you're doing it in the right way. So I think it, it's interesting. But yeah, on the plus side, you know, China and the European Union have recently signed an investment agreement. So it's, you know, maybe we've got better times ahead, but I think this import export controls, it's reactive, but international companies who've got R&D in China should really check whether they're being affected as well. So what kind of actions do these types of companies take if, you know, if they do have R&D activities in China? What, what actions would you recommend? Well, I think it's still early days because you know, these regulations are very new, but I think you're gonna to have to consider, you know, am I involved in a kind of good technology or service that is sensitive? So I think you know, it might be things like facial recognition technology you could imagine. And you, know, you should also, if you've got a large business here, really make sure that you understand how the export controls affect your various business units and keep a track on what is actually happening, not just in the laws, but in practice. And then I think one issue that hasn't been really addressed by anybody is it might be a bit like state secrets. Uh, you know, PRC state secret cases, they're relatively rare, but when they happen, it's a very serious matter. And I think export controls might be similar. So I think for most people, it'll be a very manageable problem. But if you're doing something which is very sensitive, uh, you know, it might be like electronic mapping or something, uh, you know, be careful and you know, make sure that you've got a plan how to deal with that data. And that might even cross over states uh, secrets as well. Thanks so much for that insight, Mark. I think it is really interesting stuff. Of course, 2021 might still have a little bit of uh, um, lessons for us to learn. So if you'd like to reach out to Mark, uh, his email and contact information are on the screen. Thank you so much for watching.